Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. We need to talk about tyrosine sole. So if you've been following the news, then perhaps you're already aware of this, but if you aren't, I'm just gonna fill you in. So there have been 20, there's been a recall of tyrosine, 27 different lots of tyrosine sole for being subpotent. In other words, they do not have a high enough dose of, of concentration of thyroid hormone inside of the 27 lots. Um, that were created. Now this, this recall was considered voluntary, which means that the company raised their hand and said, hey, we're going to take these off the market because in our aftermarket tests or after production tests, they were shown to have a decreased amount of the thyroid hormone that they need. Now this just follow, this is one um, in, in a long line of many other recalls that have occurred over the last several years. And, but, in, but what's interesting here is that this one is now in a more conventional medication instead, whereas the other ones were previously in the natural desiccated thyroid realm. So what I wanna do is take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about the difference between these conventional FDA approved thyroid medications, which contain T4 only, and the difference between those and NDT medications, and the difference in terms of how much their wiggle room they're allowed to have with their various doses and concentrations and strengths of their medication. So when it comes to these FDA approved thyroid medications like Tyrus and Soul, they are allowed to have a plus or minus wiggle room of 5%. I'm gonna change this because that doesn't look so good. So what we're gonna do plus or minus 5%. Now what that means practically is that if a dose of thyroid medication or a strength says it has 100 micrograms, they're allowed to have that dose plus or minus this 5%. So they're allowed to have this wiggle room. So in other words, it could be anywhere between 95 and 105 micrograms. So if you were a patient taking this, what you would see is that sometimes your dose might have, I don't know, let's say 96 from one lot and then another lot, you might have 104. But either way, the FDA says, hey, this is close enough um, because we know it's gonna be really difficult if, if not, um, you know, not, I wouldn't say impossible, but very difficult um, and cost prohibitive to get 100 micrograms in every single dose, every single time of every single capsule. So what they say is, look, we know this is gonna happen, so we're allowing this 5% plus or minus 5% wiggle room. Now this, this um, range applies to the FDA approved medications like levothyroxine, Synthroid, Tyrosin, both Tyrosins, um, all of these T4 only thyroid medications. Now this is different, this range is different from the range that is required of NDT medication. So I wanna talk about that right now and we'll see why, we'll leave, this, we'll leave that up there. The NDT medications are allowed to have a range of plus or minus 10%, right? So we're gonna use, we're gonna use this example just to explain it. So imagine you have a 100 milligram dose of Armour Thyroid. Now, it doesn't actually come in that dose, but just ignore that for a second. We're just doing this for the purposes of easy math. Now, you are technically allowed to have a dose anywhere from 91 to 109 milligrams, and that will not be subpotent or superpotent. It would just be fine in, in terms of the, um, from the eyes of the FDA. But as a thyroid patient, that's not actually that great for you because you could have a pretty big swing from one lot to the next, which means that some lots you might feel great because you're getting, let's say, 109 micrograms, because remember, most thyroid patients are underdosed. And then the next lot, you're getting 91 milligrams. Like that is a pretty big swing between the two. But from the eyes of the FDA, they say, you know what, this looks good to us. You're within that plus or minus 10% range, no problem. Now, what was happening before is that it was going below that. So we were having, instead of the, the range, the low range being 91, maybe it was 85 or 88 or whatever it was. And that's why the recalls happened with the NDT thyroid medications. In the case of tyrosine sole, it was subpotent, which means it fell below that 5% that range on the low end. So in other words, it had a less, had a smaller amount of thyroid hormone um, beyond the acceptable range than what is normally acceptable for medications like tyrosine which means that that's usually a big deal, right? Because thyroid patients are already under dose. So the lower the dose that they take, the more likely they are to, they are to fill it. So what should you do if you're taking tyrosine sole and you think that your dose might be infect, uh, impacted or you're taking tyrosine sole and now you're becoming more symptomatic? Well, the easiest thing that you can do is just contact your pharmacy and say, hey, um, is my lot affected? And they'll let you know. 
So this problem will probably be rectified rather quickly. I don't think it's anything to necessarily freak out on quite yet, um, but I do wanna just bring it to your attention to keep you in the loop, to let you know what's going on with thyroid medications, um, because that's what I'm here for, to just inform thyroid patients about what's going on in the, in the thyroid world. So I don't think it's time to freak out yet. Um, it, is, it is both good and bad though. Good in the sense that um, it's not just the natural desiccated thyroid medications which are being impacted by these recalls, but, but bad in the sense that you never really wanna see more bad press for thyroid medications. That's not really something that we wanna be seeing. Um, so hopefully in the future, there will be parity between the um, requirements between FDA medications, uh, FDA approved medications and the sort of grandfathered in medications of the NDT, because I think overall that's just better for you, the thyroid patient. If we can get medications closer in range to one another and closer to the stated dose on the bottle, that's gonna help you feel better. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, this is just a video to inform you and keep you in the loop. So I'll see you guys in the next one.